and ask the Lord to do something in this service. God, I thought we had a wonderful altar call this morning. People praying in the altars and digging in. And I'll tell you, sometimes you just need the Lord to strengthen your hands. Chapter number 5 of St. Mark's Gospel. They came over to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. When he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. He had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains. And the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Very familiar story to us Bible readers. Amen. If you have your Bible and you'd like to turn over to the book of Judges. The book of Judges. You find there the story of uh, Samson. As you go through this story, I preached a message one time on who's going to break the ropes. But you'll find that Samson was a magnificent giant of a man when, his, when the power of God came on him. I don't know that he wasn't an average man when the Spirit of God wasn't on him. I'm not sure he looked like the Incredible Hawk or something. He may have just looked normal. The Spirit of God made him do abnormal things. Verse number 14 of chapter number 15 says, When he came unto Lehi, of Judges, Judges chapter 15, verse 14, When he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, And the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire. And his bands loosed from off his hands. And uh, verse number uh, 10 of Delilah, uh, chapter 16, Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast bought me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, where is what thou mightest be bound? And he said unto her, If thou bind me fast with new ropes they were, that were never occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars and waited by him in the cha chamber, and he broke, and he brake them from off his arms like a thread. Verse number 20, and he, she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he woke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. Lord, help me to preach tonight, God. Touch every heart, every life, and every soul, dear God, that's in this place tonight. God, give me the words to say. I just want to preach a simple message. God, just going to go back. God, and try to reach for a heart, a life, or soul. God, many souls in this place tonight, God, that are desperately needing your help. I'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I want the church to bear with me tonight. Amen. While we go through some old stories and tell some things we've heard as we try to touch someone's heart in this service here tonight. I got a, a, a song was sent to me and I'm getting ready to memorize it for the Juvenile Detention Center. And it is called The Chain Breaker. I got it last night. I guess I, listened, I couldn't get it to upload during after the storm. I don't know if the tires were down or whatever. But I uploaded it this morning let some of the guys hear it. And the title of that song is Chain Breaker. And I got to, to listen to that and it took my mind back to the message I had preached here. And uh, I got to thinking about this service tonight and people that are sitting under the sound of my voice. And again, I, I marvel at this man legion. I've preached about him many times. His name wasn't Legion. Run, man, run. I've preached about Samson. He broke, he could, he, he, who's going to break the ropes? All these things, a mistake you can't shake. I love these stories. They're some of, they're, they're very, they have such rich lessons to be learned from them. 
And as I, I look into this, I realize that so many people in this town today are, are survivors. And again, as I look at Legion, he was, again, he was crazy, he was wild, but he was a chain breaker. And he was a man that could overcome, had overcome a lot of obstacles and survived some crazy things in his life. As I open my Bible to get ready to preach tonight, uh, I, I, a, a little card that I have not seen in a while come out of my Bible here. Uh, Kiana, Kiana, Janae Carter. Of course, we all know where she, where we met her at and how that we worked with her. And if you hadn't had a chance to see this picture, you can look, look at it tonight at the church, but a beautiful young lady. And she come from pretty rough circumstances, overcome a lot of crazy obstacles in her life. Amen. She was a chain breaker. As I look around this service tonight, I see people here. Amen. You've got a story to tell of where you've been and what you've been through. Oh, I feel like preaching a little bit tonight. As I look around this place tonight, I see some young men and some young women. And you got a story to tell. As a preacher, Brother James, raised in a preacher's home, what you have been through, what you have survived, what you have overcome is almost beyond my comprehension and my imagination. Amen. I, uh, right up here in this trailer park, and I mentioned it before, there's a couple up there by the name of, uh, hey man, of Shirley, hey man, and, uh, Randy. And I'm telling you, Randy had been, you know, this is hard to fathom in my mind, but Randy had been in over a hundred foster homes. A hundred foster homes in his life, brother. Just, I can't even comprehend that. Uh, uh, Shirley, hey amen. Her mama died. Her daddy died in a plane crash at a young age. Her daddy made her get married. Hey amen. Uh, her mama made her get married to an alcoholic when she's, I think, 14 years old. And he was in his 20s. She said, I can't take care of all you kids. Too many kids around here. And by the time she was 18, she already had three or four children. By the time she was 18 uh, and was being abused and her husband was cheating on her. And, and again, this, none of this is secret. You know, none, none of this is private stuff that she's told other people know this. And, and the things that she finally got a restraining order against him. And one night, uh, he found her by following the school bus home. Uh, and he tried to kill her. He set her on fire. He cut her from from here to here, sliced her wide open, broke broke her body, drug her by the hair of the head to the top of the steps, and would throw her down the steps to the bottom of the steps, grab her by her hair, drag her back up the steps, pick her up and chuck her back down the stairs, uh, knocked her, of course, unconscious, uh, broke the, all of her fingers. If you look at her little hands, her now broke her feet, broke her body, snapped her arms, her hands, uh, and after it was all done, cut her open, set her on fire, and left her for dead. Uh, amen. And, and raped her that night. Uh, they found her uh, the next day. Uh, they found her that evening, whatever, took her to the hospital. She lived in the hospital for a solid year uh, just to learn to eat and to walk and to talk again. You talk about a chain breaker, huh? My God, what a what a uh, thing to overcome, brother! Oh, what a life! And I look around this place tonight, and there are people here. And I only know the tip of the iceberg uh, of what you have been through in your life. Uh, hey, but I'm going to tell you, you've overcome some wild things. Uh, you survived some horrible things. Uh, hey, man, but just like Legion in the Bible, uh, hey, man, you can't seem to change. Uh, you can't seem to overcome. Uh, hey, man, for some of you, uh, you. Can can break chains, uh, but you can't overcome that little needle uh, with that syrup in it. Uh, amen. For some of you, uh, a little white pill, uh, amen. A little pill's got you bound, uh, and you cannot overcome it tonight. Uh, you broke chains in your life. Uh, you overcome things that I can only imagine. Uh, amen. But you overcome yourself tonight uh, by something that's overwhelming you. Uh, amen. For others here, it's a bottle. Uh, amen. A bottle of alcohol. Uh, amen. That you cannot overcome. Uh, oh, you broke a lot of chains. Uh, you overcome a lot of horrible things. Uh, but tonight you are bound. Uh, I said you are bound uh, by something in your life. Amen. Woo! Bless Lord. Bless Lord. Surely survived that. Surely survived that. That awful night. Only right before I started this church, her son, her daughter, who was her best friend, had a stepson by a man she had married. It was not her son, but it was her husband's son. 
He come in one morning, one cigarette money, she wouldn't give it to him. So he thought she he thought she'd went to work and he went in her bedroom to steal some money and get cigarettes and she was in there. She woke up and got to fussing at him. He grabbed the hammer, went to a rage, and beat Shirley's daughter to death with a hammer. Set the house on fire to cover up the evidence. Hey man, only when the house burnt down to this day, don't know why, kind of strange. The house burnt to the ground except the perfect circle around her body did not burn. And she did not burn and she wanted to cover the evidence. And surely when that first come here was surviving that, oh, you listening to me, she's overcome a lot of things in her life. Hey, unless she called me at one o'clock in the morning. Preacher, can you come up here? I down to her house at one o'clock in the morning. Sit down on the couch beside her. She said there cried. Uh, so I'm hurting all over. Preaching little broken fingers and hands that are full of arthritis now. Uh, I said, Shirley, uh, there's a hurt that goes past the outside, sis. I said, there's something going on. Uh, you're hurting inside. Uh, I said, what's going on? She said, today's the anniversary uh, of the death of my daughter that got beat to death with a hammer. Uh, and I was so mad and still so angry, Seth, uh, and still so bitter. Uh, I got you overcome a lot of things, uh, but there's some things you just can't change. There's some things you just can't fix on your own. And I come to preach to somebody tonight. Hey man, you may be a chain breaker. Hey man, but you don't have the power to break yourself free of the bitterness that's in you. You don't have yourself from the power to set yourself free of the hatred that's inside of you tonight. You don't have the power to set yourself free. Hey man, my God of the chains that bind your soul and bind your mind in this house tonight uh, and you sit in this service uh, and the devil's told you there's no hope uh, because even though you've overcome uh, a lot of obstacles uh, and even some near death experiences uh, you're here tonight uh, and the devil says I'm going to kill you uh, and I'm going to take you straight to hell uh, and there's no hope for you uh, you're going to die amen bound uh, by the things uh, that's got you around the throat tonight oh you can break chains but you can't change. I said, you can break chains, but you can't change. I'll tell you what, Brother Brent. I ain't afraid off of the Holy Ghost preaching. I hope I got to pray in church. I didn't come to press anybody. I'm going to preach what I feel like preaching. You're in this house and I'll tell you one thing, Brother Brent. I ain't afraid of nothing or nobody. Okay. I'll tell you what, Brother Brent, I'm bad in the bone when it comes down to it. I'll whoop anything it wants. I'll tell you the truth, Brother Brent, I'll, stay, I'll tell you they mess with me. I'll, do. I'll be honest with you. I'm not so sure you wouldn't try to back up what you said, but I, I, think, they, I think people mean it sometimes. I look at them, Brother Brent, I say, man, they, they tackle the biggest guy there. They, they ain't afraid. They're chain breakers, huh? Walk in and just go nuts. A little old white stick about that long. No tremble, so I'm going to quit this. I ain't smoking none today. Before the end of the day, so the trembling fingers are lighting up and over. You know why? They can break chains, but they can't change. Yeah. All across this town tonight, Brother Ryan, all across this town. Hey, man, there are men in this town that are bad to the bone. You understand what I'm telling you? They'll kick in a bar door, walk in there, whoop five men at once, man. They'll fight anything that moves. Hey, man, but when they go home, they told their wife, I promise I won't spend my paycheck on alcohol or drugs this weekend. But they don't have the power to drive past Dirty Dog Saloon on Friday night. And after making their wife a promise, uh, hey, man, they're big enough and bad enough to whoop anybody in there. Uh, but they're not man enough uh, to drive past that place. Place, uh, and go home to their wife. Uh, amen. And say, uh, they're chain makers, brother Justin. Uh, but they got their powers uh, to overcome the demons uh, that haunt their soul. Uh, I'll help me preach tonight, Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. You hear me? There's women in this town. Uh, amen. They're not afraid to scrap. Uh, they ain't afraid of the law. Uh, amen. They'll spit in the cop's face. Uh, amen. They're wild. Uh, amen. They'll overcome things. Uh, they've been abused and molested and used. Uh, and they survive. Uh, hey, but they sit in their room and cry at night. You know why? Uh, because they're bound. Uh, I said they're bound. Uh, to a bottle of pills. Uh, to a bottle of alcohol. Uh, hey, but they're not 
needle. Uh, are you listening to me? Uh, they've overcome. Uh, things I can't even comprehend. Uh, but they cannot change. Uh, they run the chains uh, that bound the inside uh, of their soul tonight. Uh, amen. You may be a chain breaker, but you cannot change uh, yourself tonight. Uh, woo! Oh, let's look at our text. Amen, Legion. Amen, the Bible said they tried to bind him with chains and he broke the chains off of him. Man, I'm going to tell you something. I seen a pit bull. He had tripped at a job not long ago and I knew he was in trouble. When we walked up to the door, there's a fact with my hand up. I heard barking inside the house. And brother, amen, I heard barking. I looked down the front porch, Tim, and the dog chain was a logging chain. Y'all hear me what I'm telling you? Huh? Was it not, Trent? They wasn't no dog chain you buy from Walmart. That thing was a chain you could tow a truck with and I'm out of I said, Lord, my God, he'll pull a whole mobile home off the blocks. And that's a fact. I looked at that thing and I said, God in heaven, what kind of dog's in this place? He sounded pretty mean. I didn't want, when I got back, thank the Lord, and put him in a cage. I wasn't going in there if he didn't. Any dog has to be held with a logging chain. I ain't having no parts of it. That's a fact, I'm telling you. And there was two of them. Woo, Kiara, I'm scared. I looked at that dog and I looked at that log and chain. I said, have mercy on my soul. What kind of dog we got here? You said, Brother Brent. And I think about that chain that they ran. And I looked at that chain of that dog. That had, can you imagine a man breaking that in two? Man, I wrapped a chain around a tree and lifted a tree out of the ground, Brother Ryan. I wrap a chain around a bumper of a, of, a, of my dump truck and pull my dump truck out of this place. 12,000 pounds. I can't imagine. I broke a chain or two trying to yank on some brother. Carter, I can't understand a man that could break a chain like that. I can't even fathom the strength that was in that rascal that could break that chain. Uh, hey man, and they couldn't tame him. They couldn't talk him. They couldn't send him to rehab. They tried to rehab him. Rehab wouldn't work. You know why? He was wild on the inside and the outside. Uh, and the Bible said, in the middle of the night. Uh, he runs through the mountains crying uh, and cutting himself with stones. Uh, you want to know why? Uh, there was times he felt like an animal. Uh, and there was times he felt like he could whoop anybody. Uh, and when, the, when he come down out of there, there was nobody watching him. Uh, in the middle of the night, he screamed and cried uh, because he hated who he was. Uh, he hated what the demons done to him. Uh, and he cried and cut himself with stones. Uh, he was a chain breaker, uh, but he couldn't change himself. Uh, hey man, Samson broke broke. I said, Samson broke ropes. He killed lions with his bare hands. He was a man that you can't imagine the strength he had. But he couldn't change himself. And one woman talked him out of his soul. And talked him out of his strength. And caused him to lose his eyes. And caused him to lose his victory. And caused him to lose the touch of God. After breaking ropes. And man, and killing lions and bears. Amen. One woman. Amen. Broke him down. With just a word. From her mouth, the chain breaker couldn't change. He had a fatal attraction to Delilah, and she ended up taking him down. My God, I'm a preacher to somebody tonight. You're a chain breaker, but what you need tonight is somebody that can help you change who you are from the inside out. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Oh, yeah. Now let's get to the bottom of this, and we're going to bring this to a close. Pray for me, church, tonight. And you listen to me. You walked in this place tonight, and you got two choices. I want every one of you to listen to me tonight. You can walk in here with your attitude. I don't care about nothing or nobody. Okay? I'm bad to the bone, preacher. Okay? I don't cry. I don't care. And that's the attitude you walk in here with the night. You have your old chain breaker attitude. I ain't afraid of you or God or the devil. One man, one man said, Heaven won't let me in and hell's afraid I'll take over. You say, well, Brother Brent, I'll tell you, right, that's the way I am. Okay. And you can leave here tonight and you can go back home. And you can lay in your bed and hate who you are. And hate what you do. Right. And hate the people you hurt. Right. And hate who you become. And you get around your friends, your family, you put on the dog. 
You're like Legion. You snap some chains to impress everybody. But you're just like Legion. In the middle of the night you cry. And you don't even have a desire to live. Because you hate who you are. Some of the stuff, some of the chains you broke, you didn't break them to impress anybody. You broke them because you didn't have no choice. The broken home you come from, the broken life, the abuse you may have suffered, whatever. Whatever caused it. Brother Brent's not here to blame it all on you. I'm just here to tell you tonight, you've developed an attitude of a chain breaker. I'm a tough preacher. I'm a survivor. Okay, I respect that. But don't you want to change tonight? Aren't you tired of the lonely, crying, sleepless nights? You know why you come here tonight? You're doing your best to keep your guard up. You're doing your best to keep the chains out there popping for me. Hey, preacher, I'm over here now. I'll break these chains for you. Okay, but you ain't full of this, preacher. I can look past some chains. And I can look down your eyes and look down the windows of your soul and see the tears, see the broken. See the hurt that's down inside of you. You just want more than anything to change. You hate who you are. You hate who you become. You hate the addictions that you're facing. You hate the life you're living. But you've got to make a choice tonight. I'm not worried about people thinking I'm some check breaker anymore. I want to change. I said, you've got to reach that place. I don't care about the attitude. I don't care about being big and bad and tough. And I ain't just preaching to the men tonight. I don't care about being strong and the survivor. Brother Brent, all I want tonight is a change. I'm sick and tired of who I am. And whether it's going to come down to whether this service is a success tonight or not, Brother Justin White is whether or not somebody will admit I hate who I am and I want to change. I love you, Lord. I sure am glad you come tonight. I'm glad you come back to you. And I'm going to say something I hope you'll take right. Your whole life, Tim, you've been taught to be tough, ain't you? Don't take nothing off nobody, right? Ain't that what you've taught? Don't take junk off nobody. And you spent your whole life trying to shove your way through life because that's all you know, Tim. Right? That's all you know in your marriage, in your home, in your life. And I'll be honest with you, Tim, you've overcome a lot of things in your life. You broke a lot of chains, a lot of chains that you didn't ask for. A lot of pain in your life that you didn't want, right? And you survived a lot of things. But I'm going to tell you something, Tim. Those days need to be gone, brother. It's time for you to say, God, I don't want to be tough to him no more. I don't want to be big bad. I just want, I want to have love in my heart. I want to have joy down inside. I want to jump out of the bed in the morning with a song in my heart and happiness. Am I preaching right or not? Hey, man, hey, chain breaker. And I don't say that smart, Alec. I say that sincerely, Tim. I say that in my heart. You broke some change in your life. Something that you didn't have no choice about. I want to tell you something, chain breaker. God wants you to meet the change maker. And He wants to do something down inside of you, Tim. To where you walk in that back door. And people say, who is that guy? Hey, man, who is that old Tim? Hey, man, that is that the guy that used to think that he had to push his way through because that's what his dad know. That's old Tim that went to the altar. And now he's the kindest man you ever met. Now you wouldn't, you wouldn't you'd do anything for him by now, Tim. I know that. Hey, but that's the kindest man you ever met. Uh, he's so kind. Oh, y'all help me preach tonight. Uh, I'm telling you, the chain breaker uh, needs to be the change maker tonight uh, in this service. Are uh, uh, you listening to me? Uh, hey, chain breaker, I'm preaching to you tonight. Uh, hey, man, you've overcome things, son, that I can only dream about. Uh, hey, but you can't change. Uh, and then now you're battling things in your life. Uh, hey, man, you got to go to that altar. Uh, and you got to lay down on that altar saying, God, take the chain breaker away and make a change down in my heart in this service tonight. And help me, God, to become the man or woman that you want me to be. I want peace inside. I want to be able to sleep at night. I want to 
joy that grandma's got, that the preacher's got. Amen, there, my friend. I want that joy. I'm sick of the attitude. I'm laying it on the altar in this place tonight. Lift your hands and ask God to help us. Woo! This is what I felt the Lord tell me to preach tonight. You're not here back tonight, Hannah. You're not here back tonight, girl. God wants to talk to you. I preached this on a Sunday morning a long time ago. Several months ago, God said preach again tonight. You know why? Because you weren't here that Sunday morning. There's some others that weren't here. God spoke to people that Sunday morning. God's speaking again tonight. And I want every one of you to sit up and listen to me. The Lord spoke to my heart an old story that I heard as a little boy. I heard my dad preach it with Justin. Sitting one night in a church service was an Indian chief. If you know anything about Indians, they're very fiercely dedicated to their to their religion and to their cause and to their colors and their headdress that means something. I mean they're they're fiercely they're Indian through and through, you know what I mean? Literally, he sat there in that meeting. This was years ago, back in the old days. That Indian come to that little brush arbor meeting. And in that meeting, he had his full headdress on. That white missionary had asked him to come to church. He had his tomahawk just as a signal, a symbol of strength. He wasn't there to kill nobody. You know what I mean? Just he's there in his full garb and his full attire. He was there to represent what he believed, believed in. And that preacher preached about you got to die. you got to let Jesus take over. you got to lose your old identity and let God give you a new identity. And if you know anything about Indians, they worship the sun and the stars and the moon. They have a lot of rituals that aren't right. They do a lot of crazy things. And that night, that Indian, when the preacher gave the altar call, that's what I want you to listen to me in closing. He walked up to that altar. He stood there at that altar. And after a minute, he reached up and he took that headdress off that represented him as chief of all those Indians. And he laid it on the altar. And he said, oh, the old Indian lays a headdress on the altar. He stood there for a moment longer. And I know it's a strange. I felt the Lord tell me to tell this story. He reached over. He looked at that tomahawk that represented warrior and fierce and Indians are taught you don't cry, you fight, you're a man. I'm all for being a man's man. We don't need a bunch of sissies. I don't mean that. Seth, he laid that, he said, old Indian lays tomahawk on the altar. I give up all my fighting and all my warrior ways. But the last thing he done, Sister Polly, was that old Indian sat down on that old altar in that brush arbor. And he laid himself out on that altar. And he said, the old Indian... Puts the old Indian on the altar. Are y'all hearing me tonight? Amen. Brother Britt, do I have to walk up here and physically lay on that altar? No, you don't. But I'm telling you, there's got to be something down inside of you that's got to say, I'm ready to give up everything about me. I'm ready to give up my attitude, my thoughts, my ways, and my pain and my problems. And I'm ready to be and to do what God wants me to do. As I close with you tonight, the devil's told many of you sitting here tonight, you cannot and you will not, you will never change. You'll die of this. They'll bury you of this. You'll die with this. The devil's told some of you, you can't never change. You might as well just accept it and die with it. But I come to tell you tonight, he's a liar. I said, the devil is a liar. And if you'll let him, he will change who you What made the difference in the end of the story was Legion, the chain breaker, that Jesus, the change maker. I said, Legion, the chain breaker, that Jesus, the chain maker. He had 2,000 demons dwelling down inside of him that night. 
they were drove from him. They were put in the swine and drowned in the sea. And the Bible said they came and found the man that had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. Everybody gave up on him. Maybe his mother still held a brother around the entire town. You might as well just accept the fact one of these days we're going to find him out there in the mountains dead. Hey man, we're going to find him out there gone. But when they found Legion, they said there ain't no way possible. He's talking straight. He's walking straight. He's got clothes on. He's not cutting himself. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. The chain breaker met the change maker and he turned his life around. Stand to your feet and worship the Lord all over this house tonight. Sister Kara, sing that song. You said you can come as you are. With all your broken pieces, all your shameful scars. Can I plead with someone tonight that the devil's talked you out of giving God a chance? Why don't you give God a chance? Why don't you sincerely try? You've never... You've, what you're doing ain't working. You're miserable. Give God a chance tonight. Well, if you go to that altar, you can't do this. You can't. Don't worry about none of that. Just say, devil, I know what I'm doing. It's not working. I need a change. I need a change that I can't breathe. Like I failed tonight. I felt the Lord, but I don't know if I've convinced you that you can make a change. I've prayed told this 50 times in this church. The big Willie that sat in this church this morning sat in my car. Brother Brent, I'm a cocaine addict. I've been a cocaine addict for 20 years. He said, I'll always be a cocaine addict. I'll die a cocaine addict. I said, no, you won't, Willie. It's a fact of my hand. I'll be here this morning. I said, Willie, go to that altar and sincerely ask Jesus to set you free. Two weeks later, he set my car in tears running down his face. He said, preacher, I never could have been possible. But he did it. I have zero desire for it. He told me the other week, he said, Brother Prince, from that day to this, I've never had cocaine again in my life. I've been about four years now, maybe five. The chain breaker. That's a chain breaker. We've got one that's done stepped out of their seat, made their way to the seat. I want to know tonight without one second's delay. Is there another person in this place tonight that would just step out of your seat? It ain't about joining this church. It ain't about membership. We don't care about We don't even have church membership. We just get together and have church. Is there anybody to step out of your seat right now and say, Brother Brent, I've got one that's already come. I want to change. I want to change. Brother Brent, I don't want to be a hypocrite. A hypocrite's not somebody that comes to the altar and says, I got a problem and I need help. Hypocrite's the one that shouts around the church and acts like everything's okay when they do have a problem. When you step out of your seat, you come to this altar, you say, Preacher, I need help. That's not a hypocrite. That's the opposite of a hypocrite. I wonder if there's any one more. Y'all pray for me, church. I appreciate those who've been pulling with me this message. I've done all I can do. I read you mail. I preached the message. God told me I repeat a message I preached here three, four months ago. For you here tonight, because you weren't here then. And God said, preach it on tonight. I'm begging you. Don't pray out how to pray. I want you to don't worry about it. We'll meet you down here. We'll pray with you. But you got to be sick of who you are and what the devil's done to you. It won't be no good. Come on, pray, church. Pray, pray, pray. Standing down here at this altar. You came here tonight because you hate who you are. You came here tonight because you need help. Now get out of that seat right now. Come down here to this altar right now.